Hey guys, my name is Simsy. How are you all doing? Welcome back to some more Football Manager 2017. Welcome back to the Road to Glory. This is Season 2. So guys, if you still are enjoying this Football Manager series and would like to see more, the best thing you guys can do is leave a like and a comment and subscribe if you're new around here. Depending on how... Like, obviously, if this video gets more likes, more comments, I'm going to be more inclined to up more, upload more Football Manager on the channel compared to my other series. So guys, welcome to the the road to glory. Welcome uh, to the, the journey to become a world-class manager, hopefully. So there's only a couple of rules for this Football Manager 2017 Road to Glory, and that is I have 10 seasons to become a world-class manager. I have 10 seasons to win a major domestic league title, either in like Germany, France, uh, Spain, Italy, England, but winning the Bundesliga, the Premier League, La La Liga. That's basically the main objective. We've got 10 seasons to do that. So this is Season 2. In today's video, we're going to be doing the entirety of Season 2. I want to play a lot more matches because in the last episode, we had a lot of moving around. I will recap the last episode if you guys haven't watched all the way through it, which is understandable because that was a huge episode. So hopefully... Today, we can sign for Lazio. Yes, we're currently the manager at Nuremberg, but I think I'm going to accept the Lazio job. And if we can have a full season at Lazio, that would be excellent. We can play a couple of matches, like obviously the main rivals, Juventus, and of course, our our, our city rivals. Obviously, Lazio is, um, is in Rome, and Roma, that derby is so huge. From what I can remember, I think they um, share the same, the same stadium. So, we're starting Season 2 now. It is the 16th of June, 2017. I'm currently the Nuremberg manager. So, in the first season, I'll quickly go to my profile and show you guys what happened. So, I started off in humble beginnings. As I am Australian, I thought it would be fitting to start in Australia. We started for Melbourne City in the City Group. Can I click on Melbourne City here? Uh, why is it not doing this? This is fine. Okay, so we started at Melbourne City. We managed to win... Uh, yeah, so we started at Melbourne City in, and in, in the December we left. So we managed to win the Domestic Cup, which is excellent. Um, Melbourne City didn't manage to go and win the league, but they finished second. Now, in the December, I had a... A, a huge job opportunity to go to Germany, to go to Nuremberg and play with them from December onwards and trying to get them promoted. We managed to get Nuremberg promoted to the Bundesliga. I have played a little bit of preseason. I have set up the squad, but then uh, two, job op two job opportunities opened, and it was the Lazio job and the Valencia job in Spain. I applied for both, but I've actually been offered the Lazio job, which is huge going to Italy. Lazio is a huge club. And I've only got 10 seasons, so if we had a bit more, I feel like I could have stayed at Nuremberg, but I've sort of made the decision to to leave them. Like I said, I've only got 10 seasons, because I feel like after 10 seasons in Football Manager, most of the world-class players you know now have retired, and there's not really a reference point, if you know what I mean. And most of the youngsters are come have come of age and are nearly going to be start retiring anyway. I think 10 seasons is a perfect time to wrap things up. So, like I said, it's the 16th of June, 2017. Nuremberg have just been promoted to the Bundesliga, along with Stuttgart. Let's actually have a look at the Bundesliga, and maybe some of the sort of how the other league shaped up around the world. So I will be joining Lazio, which will be a pretty big job season two. Within two seasons, I've gone from Melbourne City to Nuremberg, now to Lazio. Lazio doesn't have a manager. They managed to finish in uh, yeah, finishing 12th last season. The season before, they finished in 8th and 3rd, which is not good. Juventus did win, followed by Napoli, Inter, Torino in 4th, Roma 5th, AC Milan 8th. They finished behind Palermo. So it's going to be a tough one to really play at Lazio. They've actually had a fair few transfers out. Um, as you can see here, they managed to sell Felipe Anderson, the main one of the main stars, for £16 million. He's worth like 37 now. They also sold Jordan Lukaku to Crystal Palace. Uh, who else did they sign? Uh, Lucas Biglia as well went to Manchester City. So we have lost a lot of players. Who have we brought in at there? Okay, two players from Empoli. Okay, right. We'll go through and focus on Lazio once I accept the job, but let's sort of focus on Nuremberg. So I did have the preseason last year. Uh, Tobias Kemp was our main man. Uh, 
Played pretty well, was our top goal scorer. Um, I didn't manage to bring anyone in at Nuremberg because simply I joined in December. This is another man's team. I didn't have a chance to bring anyone in. We did sell, um, who was it? Jakob here we sold to China. But that was pretty much it because he wanted to leave. So he managed to get promoted into the Bundesliga. So obviously the Lazio board saw within half a season I won the Domestic Cup in Australia and with someone else's team in December onwards in that first season we managed to get Nuremberg promoted. Nuremberg have a huge, they have a really, really cool history in Nuremberg. They have won the Bundesliga nine times and the German Cup four times. Lazio have only won the um, Serie A I do believe it's three or two times. It's two times, and they've won the UEFA Champions League once. That was in, oh God, I can't remember. It was in the 90s, 99, 98. So, yeah, basically, for the, we had preseason. I chose my starting 11. We're going to be, yeah, I chose my uh, starting 11 for that. I did manage to bring in one player for Nuremberg, which I was very sort of upset about, I managed to pick Michi Batshuayi up for an absolute bargain. He is worth £13 million, 23 years of age. We were lacking a striker because most of my strikers were on loan and we needed a target man up front. Chelsea spent £34.5 million from him in June 2016. We managed to pick him up for, I do believe it was... It was 5.5, then 6.5 with add-ons. So, Michi Batshuayi will be joining Nuremberg. So, I've signed Michi, who I probably could... I really should have got for Lazio, but I didn't think I would be leaving Nuremberg. I was setting up for a, a Bundesliga campaign. So, unfortunately, we're going to be leaving Nuremberg here. We're going to be starting Season 2 of the Football Manager career at Lazio. And uh, let's see uh, how we... Yeah, if we do a full season with Lazio... I'm hopefully going to be able to uh, play a lot more matches instead of moving around the place. I could see myself leaving in December if a top uh, Premier League side come for me. Or maybe, yeah, probably like a really a strong top four side. But Lazio, we don't have any European football from what I'm aware. No, we've only got, obviously, the Serie A and we have the Italian Cup. We finished in 12th, hopefully. We can go on and, and try and get some sort of silverware this season. So I'm happy to announce that the ball will shortly begin to uh, produce a affiliate. Right, okay, cool. CMC is hired at Lazio. Welcome to Lazio. Lazio transfer update. Okay, so these are the rules. Have already filled the two non... So we, we, we're only allowed to have two non-EU spots in the squad. Okay, so that's um, disappointing. So that means we only can have two Brazilians at a max. All right, cool, cool. So what I'm going to have to go do off camera is I'm going to have to basically decide my starting 11, what's the best. Because Football Manager is a little bit time-consuming, I'm going to be chopping this episode into highlights. At the moment, oh, God, okay, right. We're currently spending over £1 million in our wage budget, and we only have a transfer budget of 500000 Yikes, we don't have that much money to spend. Board-wise, what do they want me to do? What do they actually want me to achieve? Um, probably welcome to Lazio, maybe attend a meeting. Right, what else is here? So there's the transfers, like I said. They have brought in a couple of players from Empolo. That's not bad. That's not a bad buy here for him. Ricardo Sampanora. Manuel, 25. So this guy was a, a striker. And who was the other guy? He was a, an attacking midfielder. Okay, Mitchell Dykes. Okay, Ajax man. We essentially don't have any money, so we're adopting someone else's um, team. Hopefully, we can have enough time to to really build a decent squad here at Lazio. So we lost Lucas Biglia. We lost Felipe Anderson. We've lost Jordan Lukaku. Ravel Morrison as well, I think. On, no, he's on loan at Crystal Palace, the Englishman. So competitions-wise, yeah, okay, so here are my objectives. That's where it actually says here. So they want me to qualify for the... Euro Cup. So I think that's the Europa League. Right, right. And they want me to reach the quarterfinals of the Italian Cup. Now, um, should I, I'll quickly just show you guys how the other leagues shaped up around the world. So Real Madrid won the Liga, followed by Barca, Atletico Madrid, and Sevilla. Uh, in the Bundesliga, I'm pretty sure Bayern won, yes, followed by Dortmund, Bayer Leverkusen, Schalke, 
Uh, Dom Stadtberg and Braden. Um, okay, Red Bull Leipzig finished in 13th. Arsenal won the uh, the English Premier League, which is huge, followed by Tottenham in second by a point, Man United third by two points, Man City fourth, Chelsea fifth, Liverpool sixth. Okay, okay. No potential job openings there. Everyone seems to be uh, there in League League uh, um, In League One, Paris won, followed by Monaco. Where did Nice finish? Fourteenth. I think the other leagues are sort of a, a little bit irrelevant at the moment. So, of course, looking at the uh, Serie A, Juventus have won one, two, three, four, five, six league titles in a row. I think that's pretty much it for the Lazio board. Here are my affiliate clubs. Oh, Werribee Wer City in uh, Australia. Okay, so they finished in 12th. They finished in 8th the year before. My captain is Stefan. Uh, my hot prospect is Maximilio Tessa. And then we've got Kieta here. I really want to try and keep on to him. I will pick my starting 11. I'll see if I can bring any new players. And, I yeah, I'll, I'll quickly show my tactics we're going to have to make them up. But I reckon I'm going to be playing the 4-4-2 this season. Obviously, Serie A is very defensive, so we might have to play the Jose Mourinho 5 at the back. And then we might even have to... Adopting maybe like Conte's 3-5-2 um, might be quite cool. Um, I don't think the Gagan pressing 4-3-3 is going to work. But I'm going to pause the video here. I'm going to cut it here, and I'll see you guys in the next highlight for a second. Hopefully, you guys are enjoying this Football Manager Road to Glory series. I'm having an absolute blast, and hopefully, we can become a world-class manager and win a major league title or maybe even a major trophy uh, to come. So, Melbourne City to Nuremberg to Lazio. This is Season 2 of the Road to Glory. Okay, guys, welcome to the first match of today's episode in Season 2. We're going to be playing Fiorentina away, which is going to be huge. We've also made five new signings, three of which are pretty high Premier League players. So, for now, we're going to have the match against Fiorentina. We'll go through the new signings. I'll go through the tactics, and I'll show you guys who we've brought in. Okay, so competitions-wise, this season, we're going to hopefully try and qualify for the Europa League. If we can make top four, a top three is really in this, fourth and fifth the Europa League, first second and third are Champions League and if we can have a pretty decent cup run I will be happy. Okay let's meet these new signings. It was so difficult to bring in players to Lazio because I essentially didn't have any money. I've spent all my cash. It's the 20th of August 2017 and still in season 2 I skipped a cut a little bit ahead We've done some pre-season. We'll look through the fixtures as well. So I'll show you the players that I've brought in. So the biggest transfer I've brought in was Mangala because we did lose a pretty key centre-back. 26 years of age. He's worth £13 million. We picked him up for 10. Um, I think we did we, we did better on a couple of others. We've got some more shrewd deals. However, I, I still think that's pretty decent. Victor Moses, who is tearing it up for Conte in real life. 26 years of age. Nigerian is worth just under £12 million. We picked him up for six points. Seven, which I think is very, very good. We managed to pick up Wilfred Bonny for £4.3 million. We have two strikers, but we don't really have a target man, and I thought he would uh, come in quite nicely. He's worth 9.2. We managed up. To, we managed to pick um, uh, Rossi up for free, which I think is absolutely exceptional. Syria proven Florentina player, 30 years of age. He's valued at £4.9 million. We picked him up for free, played 44 games for Florentina, scoring 16 goals. Obviously did have his stint at Manchester United and Newcastle. Uh, who else do we bring in here? I brought in Faraoni from... Um, I brought him from Udinese because we didn't really have a right-sided player. Not very well known. 25 years of age. Just Italian. 1.3 million. And we've got Gabriel here, who is on loan. The Brazilian. I, this was brought in from a previous regime. So to get, fund these players, we did have to sell some. Unfortunately, there were some players sold last season, which I'm not happy about whatsoever. Felipe Anderson was sold to PSG. Jordan Lukaku was sold to Crystal Palace, all under a previous regime. Um, okay, Ravel Morrison was loaned out. Okay, so this season, we did manage to lose a couple of big names. We lost Wesley here, unfortunately. Uh, Holt? 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 
I don't know how to say that. 23 years of age, was my key centre-back. He's been sold to Liverpool. The board signed him over my head, which I'm pretty pissed off about. For eight, He's worth 18.2. We only got allocated 15. We could have easily got probably 20 million pounds for him. I managed to move on Maurizio, the Brazilian, 28 years of age. Didn't really need him. We have an abundance of centre-backs. Uh, Luis Alberto here, the former Liverpool man. Um, didn't Couldn't really fit him into my system, and I didn't really need him. Ravel Morrison is worth five. He's gone to Burnley. We sold him for three million pounds. Uh, couldn't fit him really into my system either. And that's pretty much it for the big players there. You're most welcome to pause and have a look. So for this season, we're going to be playing a 4-4-2, the classic Sir Alex Ferguson. If we do concede a goal and want to sort of hold on to the league, we can go with a 4-3-3. Now, because we're not in Germany, the 4-3-3 Jurgen Klopp gag impressing doesn't really work in Syria. So I might be inclined to move to like a 3-5-2, like the Contes, switching between the three at the back and then the five at the back. Um... But I think I want to play with Sir Alex Ferguson's 4-4-2 in today's match against Florentino. Now, as you can see from the scout report, I'll just search it here now. Looking at Florentina's formation, a 4-3-2-1, that's their most successful. That's what they use the most. Um, their most vulnerable is a 4-4-2. So hopefully the 4-4-2 can work well in... Um, in Syria. So this is the formation I'm going to be playing as. Now it's sort of a 4-3-3 asymmetric technically, but it sort of just depends on my left midfielder or my right midfielder. Some people are better off pushing up the pitch. So we're going to be, this is what I was playing until Immobile picked up an injury and Barisha as well. So Immobile up front, the former Sevilla Dortmund, Torino, man, he's very, very competent. However, he has picked up an injury. He's only out for three to five. We've got Rossi up front as well. We have Keita on the left. Sorry about that one, guys. I got interrupted by the train. I don't know if you can still hear it now, maybe in the distance, but the, the honking has stopped. Now, on to Keita. He's going to be playing on the left for us. We have uh, Kata Aldid. Kata Aldid, Italian 23-year-old. He's a pretty decent box-to-box -box midfielder. We have Ricardo Sampanara, 25, 19 million pounds he is worth. We have Victor Moses on the left. Hopefully he can perform as well to us as he did at Chelsea. On the left back here, we have the Romanian Stefan uh, Radu. Then we have uh, Stefan Defray here, 25 years of age. He was a, He's a great centre-back. He he's going to be partnering here with Mangala, who is very strong. And we have Patrick, 24-year-old Spaniard, playing as my right-back. So probably one of my weaknesses. And we have Barish here. So we're going to have to make some substitutions to help with this. But this is the team I really want to play with this season. So I wanted a target man. As you can see, I've got De Rossi playing as a trick or, a trick or kista. And then we have Immobile as an advanced forward. I feel like a target man was needed to just do whip balls into the box with Moses and, and try and get it in. So we're going to start Wilfred Bonny in this match. Uh, we'll play him as the target man. Uh, unfortunately, Immobile is not going to be eligible, which sucks. And with Barisha, is you, is, I want him to be my main goalkeeper. However, we have uh, Machetti, who can actually play quite competently there. Played a lot of games. So we are weakening my squad a little bit. But we're just going to have to sort of make do. We don't have a spare goalkeeper by the looks of it here. We should be fine. I'd be blown away if Machetti actually did pick up an injury. So we're going to have to risk it here. Um, so we're going to need a new striker to come off for Bonnie. So who do we have here? We're going to have to throw you up. Um, on the bench, we've got Philippe here. He's quite all right. Savage, the Serbian that can play in the midfield. We've got ba uh, Bastos, who is... Pretty decent centre-back, and we also have Mitchell here, Mitchell Dykes, 24-year-old Dutchman that can play on the left. So where can you play? You can play up front as well, Manuel. We'll play you here, and we're going to have to quickly switch you out for someone, um, maybe a midfielder. We don't have a spare right-back, do we? We do. Oh, yeah, the right-hand side guy. Yeah, let's chuck you on then. Okay, I think that's pretty much it for this Lazio Part so far, like I said, we're out of money. We're going to go straight into the match from now. Um, yeah, you might be wondering why I brought in so many Premier League players. I The thing is, right, a lot more Premier League players were available, which obviously I am Australian. I watch the Premier League a lot. I'm going to bring in a lot of Premier League players because I watch it a lot. And it's very hard to buy players domestically, depending 
like uh, t to buy decent players domestically wherever you are. So, uh, like in Syria, as you can see, there wasn't even that many people up for grabs. Like compare it well, comparing to. Okay, it's actually gone quite up a bit. Patrice Evan might have been a good buy there. Huh. Yeah, I know most of the leagues didn't even have that many players that um, were for sale. As you can see here, Germany doesn't have as much. League 1 didn't have any. That was a poor example going straight to Syria. Yeah, like I said here, League 1 didn't have any. Uh, down in Spain, had a, had a couple, but not very much. Yeah, in Syria, it's obviously very hard to try and bring in new players. There was a couple of shrewd buys, but obviously I've run out of money and, and things have changed now. Uh, I came close to signing a couple of players. I really wanted to sign Mario Balotelli. I, I love Mario Balotelli, but unfortunately, we couldn't come to terms. We did actually, ex we had him for £12 million. Then he moved to uh, Borussia Mönchengladbach. We nearly got uh, El Neni as well. I can't remember how to spell his name. There we go. The third Two-year-old, we got him for 16 million, but we couldn't get the contracts done. I think it was sort of good in the end because we managed to uh, bring in a we managed to bring in a trick or a trick or quista in Rossi, Syria proven striker. We've got Wilfred Bonnie, a backup target man. We've got Victor Moses, very good on the right, can track back. We've also brought in Mangala to strengthen that centre-back uh, pairing after we lost uh, Wesley to Liverpool, unfortunately. Okay, I think I'm quite ready for this match. So we've got Rossi, Boni leading line, Chieta on the left. We've got a strong Italian midfield. So most of this team is made up of Italians, some Dutch, some French. Um, a pretty decent side. At the moment, what do the board sort of think? I'm stable. Um, they feel the signing of Victor Vos is extremely good financial deal for the club. That's great. However, we're disappointed by the lack of high-profile players. That is absolutely bullshit because they won't give me hardly any money. So, we'll play the match against Florentina here today, who finished 13th in Serie A last year, uh, just behind us. It's going to be tough for Season 2 of... The uh, road to glory career mode. So hopefully here today we can... Immobile is injured. Maximum substitutions 12. Right, okay. Let's move you here then. Get him off the pitch. Right, let's get stuck into Florentina. I wonder who they're going to be playing. Really love Florentina in real life, especially like a couple of years ago when they had Juan Cadrado. They had a lot of quality players there. So we're warming up now. Okay, let's see who they're going to be playing. And they did used to have Rossi, funnily enough. Christian Tello on the left here. We're going to have to watch out for him. Goalkeeper here, Drag Dragakowski. Polishman's quite good. Uh, what have they got here? A story mass. They also used to have Savage as well. I don't think he plays them. So, hopefully Rossi and Bonnie can get stuck on the right foot. Okay, welcome to the first match of the Lazio career. Is this done? Yeah, it's perfect. Now, let's talk about Lazio real quick. Will I leave them if I get a decent Premier League offer maybe in December? But I want to try and do my best with... Um, with Lazio and hopefully try and win. Like, we could win the Serie A this year because we've got an Europa League. It's going to be very, very tough. But if our str if our signings just, like, absolutely perform, we might be in luck. Okay, so Florentino on the ball playing in the midfield here. We can't seem to intercept. Moses tracking back. And Machete dives. We are not playing our strongest team. We don't have a Mobley and we don't have Barisha in goal. But Machete and Bone should be playing all right. Uh, it's going to be a bit different with Bone, obviously, because we're playing him as a target man. He's just been called offside. It's nil-nil in the first half. We need to try and break down Florentina now. I want to try and get the... Uh, the three points against them away. Okay, so let's sort of have a look at the match stats. So we have three shots to one. They've had three to zero. Okay, tactics-wise, what can I do? How can I sort of change things up a bit? Match fitness is not really a problem. Uh, everyone else is sort of quite low. Um, I think I'll probably bring on Philip. Is he, he's another target man, though. That's the problem. Who could I play up front here? Do I just false nine Manuel? Lombardi on the right. I'm just sort of umming and ahhing. We'll keep the team on. We've been playing well so far. We haven't conceded. Let's hopefully try and build some play and grab something on the counter. If we had Immobile, who was playing as a complete forward, and oh, just bumped the mic, sorry. And Rossi. Oh, Rossi's just popped into the box as I pumped the mic. 
the first sort of real tack, we uh, we couldn't get anyone on to the end of that. We probably should be doing a lot better from those set plays. Yeah, it just sort of slows down the play. Where we've got Bonnie as a target man. I, I sort of want to bomb it in as a last resort. But, um, 70th minute now. Should I try and make some substitutions? Florentina have made two. I think it's time to make my own. I want to try and go for this match. Uh, I'm sort of thinking whether or not to bring off Bonnie. But I don't know if I should bring on another target man. Who He hasn't been playing actually that well. And neither has Rossi to be fair. So I'm thinking maybe mix things up and go with Manuel. And then we can play him as a... A false nine isn't really going to work. We're going to we need a we need a complete forward here because we've got Rossi as a false nine. Maybe can Rossi? You know he needs to stay there. I think we should go with that. Right in the midfield, how can we sort of change things up a bit? We've got my advanced playmaker. We've got my box to box midfielder. Who can maybe Savage can step up? Yeah, but then he play advanced. And should I bring on a better? Right back or left back. He can actually play quite competently there. For Faroni. Instead of the Spaniard. I sort of bought him for that left hand. So I picked him up for a bargain as well. Or am I better off bringing on... For example, Mitchell Dykes. Now I'm going to bring on my new signing, Faroni. Hopefully he can push up. We'll make him a wing back, I think. Or should we make him a full back? No, we'll go full back. Okay, there are the three changes. We're going to bring on Savage. We're going to bring on Manuel. And we're going to bring on David Ferroni. Hopefully they don't score from this set play. Because that would be the biggest kick in the teeth out. Machete with the save. Maybe we can counter here now with our new signings. I felt like Wilfred Bonnie up front sort of slowed down the play. Christian Tello on the ball. The former Barca boy. Fires at the midfield. It's going to be a throw in for Florentina. That's a nice header there. Rossi on the ball. Finds Manuel. Trying to stretch it wide to Victor Moses. They couldn't quite get there. It might be a nil-nil draw, you know. Both sides being very strong defensively. Stefan, you've got to put in a tackle there. Machete with a clean cut grab. Come on, Lazio. We can pick up a point here. We are, we are going for it. We're not trying to sit back against Fiorentina, but they seem to be playing better football in the second half. And Tello, with the finesse outside the box, has just popped it over the bar. That was a close one. Corner kick here. Late for Lazio. There's a foul in the box, is it? Is there going to be a penalty? Oh, my God. Rossi, the Italian born in the United States of America. The Jersey boy steps up and scores against his former side. It's 1-0. It is 1-0 up against Florentina. Cool, calm, and collected. He scored here in Florence time and time again and celebrates against his former side, the former United boy, Moses. I don't think I should go with a five at the back. I think we should try and just sort of hold on here because we've done our... With the, oh, motherfucker. Oh, my God. Tello with the header. Straight to Machete. Come on, Malaga. Good job there. Not Malaga, Mangala. Oh, Rot. That was a bad ball, Moses. Will we scrape the one new victory here today against Fiorentina? The three points away is crucial. No, Jesus, my God. We, we're not really containing uh, Tello here very well. Kieta on the ball. Whips it wide to Victor Moses. Oh, that was dreadful. That was really, really bad, Victor Moses. I'm positive we can't make any more substitutions. Or can you make more substitutions in Syria? Because this is this is a proper match. Can you make more su I didn't even realise this. If you can. Let's bring on Dykes. No, you can't make any more. But you can have a lot more on the pitch, yeah. Right, okay. Coming to the final minutes now. It's going to be a Florentina corner kick. We've got it out. If Kyoto can get a tackle in, that's a great block. And there's going to be a 1-0 victory away. Let's have a look at the match stats. 14-6, 7-3. We took our chances. Very lucky. That should have been either a draw, if I'm being honest. That was a very, very close match against Florentina. However, we have prevailed. And Rossi has scored his first goal for uh, Lazio. 
We're off to an absolute flyer. So who did the best? Mangala got a, a 7.8. He played very, very well. And we are, we've picked up our first win for the Lazio career. That's absolutely exceptional. Yeah, so I just want to see uh, Rossi's, yeah, one game, one goal for free. That's great. Every time I see Rossi score, we picked him up for free. So I, I just I forgot to sh sort of show you guys uh, my fixtures. I forgot to do that. We had two friendlies, picked up a 1-0 here, 2-0 here. We lost a spell here. We actually managed to lose 3-2 um, against Atletico Madrid, which I don't think is very bad. Atletico Madrid are like an exceptional squad. To put two goals against them is great. We managed to win 2-1 over Valencia. We managed to win 4-1 in the third round of the Italian Cup. Uh, Bone, Chieta, and Mobley picking up the goals, and we just managed to pick up a 1-0 victory against Florentina. For now, I think I'm going to cut the video here. Uh, I, I think I should play a match. I want to play more matches in this uh, season. Obviously, Roma is like the huge rivalry with Lazio. We share the same same stadium. But then facing Juventus, the big boys of the competition, will be quite cool. We'll just sort of see how we go to December. So at the moment, this is still Season 2, of course, of the Football Manager 2017 Road to Glory career mode. I want to try and stay with Lazio, try and build. How's Nuremberg going? I, I, really, want to, I really want them to stay up if they can. Did they win? They've, they've drawn and lost their match. How is Michi Batshuayi going? He's worth seven. We picked him up for five. He can be worth so much more than that. He's picked up on a goal and an assist so far. Not bad. So hopefully Nuremberg stay up. But like I said, I'll try to get some matches in because I do want to play more. However, if there is a big team... Um, if there's a big team sacking, I might apply for the job, especially in the Premier League. If there's a top four, top six squad, I might be more inclined to do that. I have 10 seasons. This is the objective, guys. I have 10 seasons to win a major European League title or a domestic cup. If we win Serie A, I don't know if I will end the series early, but maybe we can sort of do a bit of a journeyman if we win Serie A. But I don't know if we're going to be able to do it, if I'm completely honest. We've got Juventus, who have won, what, the last six which is insane, uh, coming up against their well-rounded squad. If we can get into the top here, I'll, I'll be very happy. But guys, I'm going to cut it here. I'll see you guys in a second. I'm not going to make any more transfers. It's the 20th of August, 2017. I have no money. I don't think anyone's going to leave. And I'll see you guys in a second for the next highlight. Hey guys, how you doing? Welcome back. It is currently the 25th of October, 2017 in Season 2. We're going to have the second match of today's episode against Roma. Obviously the huge... Uh, Rome Derby here today. It's going to be an absolute cracker. So we're going to be playing this match. So I have skipped a little bit ahead simply because uh, forward manager is a little bit time consuming and tedious. But I wanted to get to this match against Roma. So like I said, it's the 25th of October. We just finished the first match of the season against Fiorentina. We're currently sitting in 7th. Nine games have been played in total. We're about to play the 10th here with Roma. We're in 7th with 5 wins, 1 draw and 3 losses. Roman, Roman a 6th, Juventus a 5th, Palermo a 4th, Inter, Inter a 3rd, AC Milan in 2nd, and a huge upset here, Sampdoria are in 1st, who finished in 14th last season. They're undefeated with 6 wins and 3 draws, so there could be an upset in Serie A this year. Juventus have won the last 6 titles. So looking at my fixtures... We had a pretty decent run after that 1-0 victory. We had a 4-2 beating over Uden Desne, who scored in that match Rossi and Mobley. I can't remember off the top of my head. We managed to beat Sapple here 3-2. Managed to beat. We, we managed to. Our wins were really, really quite convincingly, and our defeats were actually quite big as well. We managed to beat Atalanta 4-1. We did lose 3-1 against Palermo, but as long as we pick up a goal, I'm sort of happy. You do lose points occasionally. Verona, we managed to win 4-1. We managed to only lose away 2-1 against Juventus, which I don't think is that bad. We managed to pick up a goal. I would have loved some sort of points. Wilfred Bonny picked up the late goal. Dabala and Higuain starting off a 1-1 draw against Inter at home is not good and then we managed to get smashed 3-0 against Sampdoria now this might be why that we're leaking a little bit out the back because I've got some pretty disappointing news um we managed to lose Stefan Defray in the last day uh, of uh 
of August, the January transfer deadline day. An offer came in for him for, it was £30 million. It can rise to 40 And the board sold him over my head. I'm absolutely furious at this, that the board wants me to make top four, but they're selling my best players. My two key Dutch centre-backs, Stefan here, and Wesley could have been our solid backline for years to come. But they have accepted the £15 million bid from Liverpool and the £30 million bid from Porto. There were bids from AC Milan and Juventus from what I can remember. But luckily they didn't sort of shoot me in the foot and of course um, sell sell them to a rival. Now, at the moment, we currently have £24 million, which is excellent. And there are a lot, there's a lot of awesome players in the Premier League that we can pick up. However, because of the, board, the board's sanctions, we only can sign two non-European players for, per season. So, as you can see here, there's a lot of players up on the transfer list within... Um, England, who would be a really good buy. He's 27 years of age. Marcus Rojo, we could pick him up for 7.2. Pretty solid player. Baba Rahman would be excellent. He's worth 21. We could pick him up for 19. I reckon we could pick him up, pick him up a hell of a lot cheaper than that. What I really, the guy I really, really wanted to to sign. I don't know if he's here anymore. Is he? Yeah, there he is. Victor Wanyama, an absolute destroyer in the midfield. 26 years of age, but technically he's born in Kenya. And it says, signing Victor Wanyama would go against the following rule. Lazio can only send two non-EU players per season, which is gutting because picking him up for... How much is he worth there? 14. I reckon we could pick him up for his bargaining price, but he would be exceptional in uh, Syria. There's also, there's also a couple of... Players in Italy that are up on the transfer list. Danny Alves, but he's 34, unfortunately. And, yeah, he hasn't been playing that well. I could obviously sign Danny Alves and Patrice Evra, which would be quite funny. <laughs> but I kind of feel like I need to bring in a lot more youngsters. These, not many of these players are very good up on the transfer list. So, we currently have... 24 million pounds, and we can't seem to spend it. Like I said um, previously, if if a Premier League side sacks a manager, I am inclined to move in January, uh, December. That's when the sacking usually happens before the January transfer window. Um, I yeah, we'll just sort of see how we go. I want to try and win. I want to try and get top four with. Um, in uh, Syria, maybe top three, and try and get to the final of the Italian Cup, but it's going to be tough. It really is. The board is sort of working against me, like Jurgen Klopp, obviously. Jurgen Klopp lost his best players season in, season out, and, and obviously kind of got fed, fed up of it in the end. So in this match against Roma here today, we're going to be playing a 4-4-2. We've got Rossi and Immobile leading line. We have Chieta on the left. We have Danilo in the center here with uh, Ricardo. Moses. Their first names are sometimes just easier to say. We've got Stefan Radu here playing as left back. We're going to be playing ba uh, Bastos in combining with Mangala. And we have Patrick here. We really need a new right back. And ideally, we need a new left back as well. We have Barisha in goal. We've got Wilfred Bonny on the bench. bench. We've got David here. We've got Savage. That might make an appearance as well in this match. We've got Mitchell Dykes. Maybe I should play Mitchell over... Radu, but the thing is, he is the captain, so maybe playing him a little bit longer might be all right. Okay, competitions-wise, like I said, we're currently sitting in 7th of Syria. We are currently only 5 points behind of the pack. Uh, we're only 2 points behind Juventus. So we are in 7th, but we're not really too far behind. 5 wins, 1 draw, and 3 losses. Let's have a look at the competition now. Why is Sampdoria so far up is Eder has scored nine goals, absolutely bagging them. At the moment, I'm currently, I think, all my Immobile, yeah, Immobile, Rossi, Wilfred Bonny, Danilo there, Catal Catalid has all scored four goals as well. Highest average, Mangala has been playing really well. Chieta and Immobile up with the assists. Ricardo Sampanara with the pass completion as well. Here are some of the stats if you're curious. Gabriel Barbosa up there. Danilo. Uh, it's great to see Victor Moses up there in third uh, being up there for the distance travelled. Obviously, I don't have a very strong centre-back pair. You just think if I had those two Dutch guys, man, that would be just so much better. But let's get stuck into Roma here today. Obviously, a, obviously a huge, huge rivalry. This is the, the... I would love to go watch this match in uh, in real life. 
it's the old, it's like the old Clasico. It's like Borussia Dortmund and Bayern Munich, Manchester United versus Manchester City. But it's going to be tough. Okay, so they're playing a four one two three or four three three defensive. They've got Jeco up front. Okay, they've got a target man. They have El Shawari. Who's on the right here? Okay, I thought he's quite good. Strutman, Nangol, and De Rossi in the midfield. That's so strong. One, Jesus, Gomez, Tomic. Uh, who have they got on the bench here? Mohamed Salah, Fernando. Ah, oh, the man on loan from Man City. That's quite cool. No way. It is too. Schkopf, the 23-year-old Austrian. I thought I recognized him from Nuremberg. I don't know if he was my former player, but I remember he left, I guess. Or maybe he was, I can't remember. He wasn't sort of my former sort of notable players from Nuremberg. But let's get stuck into Roma here today. Let's get stuck into the second episode. We start off with the ball. De Rossi on... Uh, not De Rossi. Um, Rossi on the ball. Okay, let's try and build some play here. If we can get the early goal against Roma, we'll be laughing. Chieta plays it back to Danilo. Keita and Mobile getting shut down. Look how many men Roma have back here. We popped it over the top to Keita, and it's Rossi just at the back post there. Makes it 1-0 just before the third, and we're 1-0 up in the derby. That's huge. Look at that ball over the top to Radu. I was thinking about dropping him, but it's Rossi to put it into the back of the net. And guys, remember, every single time Rossi scores... It's for free. Oh, the American-born Italian makes it 1-0. I'm so happy. Dzeko on the ball. We might need to go for a five at the back against them at some point. And they've answered with a goal coming back. Dzeko. That's poor. That's very, very poor. Oh, but we haven't done bad this season. Bringing in those new signings like Moses, like Wilfred Bonny, Rossi, of course. Um... Uh, it just, it really uh, it just sucks that the board is sort of against me. They're not giving me that much funds to work with, and they're selling my best players. If they want me to push for top four, but they are sort of in a bit of a financial crisis. Wait, what? I thought that was offside. Oh, Jeko makes it 2-1. Nangolan, the Indonesian... He didn't even make an attempt, Barisha. We're 2-1 down against... Roma, after we, after we started off exceptionally well. Can we get one back here? That's a foul, surely. Come on. Kieta. Rossi gets fouled. And that's going to be a red card for Roma just before the 15th. This derby is really firing up. And this we got one extra player here. Come on, let's try and capitalize on it. They're playing one player down. Obviously, if the, you, you lose a player, it either really opens up or it actually... Oh, it actually can make the other team play better. Hopefully, we can... Oh, shit. They we got way too close there. Come on, guys. Keep pressing for it. We're one player up. And Mobile, we should be able to dominate possession. Roma on the attack. Find Dzeko. I will bring on Wilfred Bonny at some point. Man, they we can't seem to con contain Dzeko here. The two former Manchester City men, Mangala and Dzeko, going at it. Hmm, we haven't seen that many stats from Lazio. Oh, shit. Come on, if we can get the ball back, we can count a big time. Yeah, because it could be a little bit more deceiving. Maybe we just haven't had many clear-cut chances, but we've had them, and we just haven't put them away. I'll look at the stats at half-time. 2-1 down. They're losing a player. We definitely should be... Um, we should try and claw this back at half-time. It would be a huge morale boost if we could do it. We've got the ball back here. Kieta bombs it over the top to De Rossi, but Juan Jesus intercepts quite convincingly. And we're just getting beaten in the midfield here. Come on. Why are you leaving Nangol in so much space there? And it was nearly 3-1. Very, very unlucky. If we can get a favorable ball back here, we're not winning the midfield too here. Ah, Barisha with a free shot there. Yeah. A shot on target. We probably should have contested that. Ah, oh, it's a shame. 2-1 down against Roma. We've had 7-5 to five on target. They've had 12-6. to six. Two off. Possession they've had more of. Is it time to make some substitutions now? Who's been playing poorly? Immobile up front. I think we can start the second half maybe a little bit more... 
Yeah, and better spirits. I'll, I'll, I'll look at the 60, and if we still haven't scored by then, it's, it's time to maybe mix up the midfield. Okay, Danilo. Keita pops it over the top to Moses. They collide, and we lose possession to Roma. Dzeko breaking away. Very ambitious to go for that shot, but we just can't seem to close him down, can we? It's a bugger. Okay, right. It's time to make some substitutions. Strootman's just come off. Um... Yeah, Immobile says he hasn't been playing well. 6.3. He's been playing very, very bad. Is it time to bring him off and maybe bring on Wilfred Bonnie, the target man? Try and get whip balls into the box to him. Or maybe it's time to just do the substitutions. Maybe it might just reignite the side. I'm going to bring on Savage. And we'll let him play box to box. We have one more substitution left. Do I wait? Hmm. Yeah, we'll chuck Wilfred Bonnie up front. We've got Savage in the midfield. And then we, we've got a couple of options. We can strengthen our back pairing, maybe bringing on Mitchell Dykes. Or we could bring on David Faroni here. Faraoni, who is, he's sort of a right, he can play quite well as that uh, wing back there. We'll give it to the 75th and we'll either bring on a new left back or right back, I think. But maybe if we can get if we can get Moses to fucking whip balls into the box to Wilfred Bonnie, we might be able to connect something here. Okay, what's happening? We're getting a little bit more possession. Come on, Florentino winning three one over Sampdoria. Right, it's the seventy fifth. Uh, we need to make some more substitutions. Um, or should I play Dykes? Is how good is he pushing up the pitch here, wing back? I might actually play Dykes over Radu because that's how we scored last time. Play him as a wing back instead of Ferroni. Yeah, let's do that then. So there are my three substitutes. We'll let my left back sort of push up and help Kieta because we're sort of we've sort of a little bit lopsided on that side anyway. We like to push the channels through there more so than the right. Come on, can we get one last highlight here? Can we claw the draw? It's going late into the 90. Is it just going to spill out there? Oh, shit. We've got like no time. And Moses has been dispossessed. Shit. That's disappointing. That is so, so disappointing. But at the end of the day, we're playing with Mangala, who luckily I brought in. I brought him as a sort of a backup. But Bastos and Mangala aren't the two centre-backs that I was expecting. And that was a poor performance. That was a really, really poor performance. 11 to 6 on target, 16 to 8. We managed to lose 2 1. Not good. Not good whatsoever. They really sat back, and uh, once they got that 2 1 lead, yeah, it's a bit of a shame, I guess. So, we're on the we're on a bad, bad run. We lost 2 1 against Juventus. We drew against Inter. We lost against Sampdoria. And now we've just lost the derby against Roma. I don't think I'm going to get stat. Oh, I actually am insecure. Uh, she's might be better. We're disappointed with the lack of high-profile signings. You fucking dickheads. You won't give me any money. How would you expect that? Okay, so now we're still sitting in seventh, and we're, we're currently six points behind the pack. So, it is time to end this highlight here. We're going to be doing the full season in today's video. So, we either might jump ship um, in December, depending on who gets sacked elsewhere in the, the sort of top four Premier League, maybe in Germany and Spain. But at the moment, um, it's looking grim. It's not looking good here at Lazio at the moment. Maybe we can claw back top four, but it's going to be very, very difficult. So, guys, I'll see you in a second. Okay, guys, welcome to the third and final match with extended highlights I'm going to be showing in today's episode for Season 2. We have the match against Juventus to, um, well, if we can beat Juventus here today, we will claw back the title, maybe. But it's currently the 10th of February 2018 in Season 2. You guys would have seen the match against Florentino at the start, of course. We managed to win 1-0 and then, unfortunately, lost 2-1 against Roma. 
So, we're currently sitting in second in Serie A. Juventus are ahead by five points. Inter a third, Roma a fourth, Sampdoria a fifth, AC Milan are in sixth, Napoli are in twelfth. Uh, Roberto Mancini is the manager. So, guys, we're going to be playing against Juventus here today. After that 2-1 loss against Roma, uh, we managed to have a pretty decent run of form. As you can see, a 5-3 over Sassuolo. We did very, very well. Um... The thing is, we with our matches that we lost, we only lost by like a goal or two. We we managed to score in most of those matches. That that match against Sampdoria three 0 was a bit humiliating, but we managed to do pretty well in the cup. I'll show you how well we're doing. We did lose against two 0 against Florentina, and we had a bit of a sketchy run here. But at the moment, if we can beat Juventus here today, we could potentially go up and break their what six in a row league titles, which is just bonkers. So, like I said, it's the 10th. Uh, after the match against Juventus, I'll end Season 2. Here, I'll recap the stats. So, uh, I do sort of apologize how long this video has been, but I'd much rather do a full season in an episode, recap it, than break it into smaller. So, we did have the January transfer window, and you guys would have remembered that I did have a pretty decent cash injection from the board going over my head and, unfortunately, selling... Um, Stefan de Frey for thirty million pounds. Now, looking at yeah, looking at the transfer listed, most of these guys were prim okay, who's that guy? Lucas. Arsenal, okay, right, there's a couple of new guys here. So I managed to bring in three new players. I did need a new right back. I was looking for a left back, but we managed to look to find that in-house. I wanted to find another centre back because we obviously sold two of my key ones. And I also wanted to build, uh, find a central midfielder. So, we managed to bring in three new players. Andrew Andre Wisdom, a 24-year-old Englishman. He's worth five, uh, sorry, 4.9. He is my right-back of choice now. He played, he played at Liverpool a long time ago. Then he went back to Liverpool from Salzburg in Austria, but didn't really set the world alight, so he's my right midfielder. It was just how it was. I only could sign two non-European players per season, and technically because England is in Europe. There was a couple other players, but I would have liked to probably go for but that's just how it is you only can really do signings in football manager if they're up for sale otherwise you have to pay a hell of a fee so you managed to bring in wisdom and he's sort by date sorry that's what i need to be doing it by yeah we also managed to bring in phil jones from manchester united 25 years of age uh he's worth 10 million we managed to or we managed to pick up wisdom for 4.8 he's worth 4.9 i think he's worth a lot more than that we managed to bring in jones for six million pounds he's currently worth 10 so we are going to make a profit on him regardless and we managed to sign syria proven andre bert all ac bert Cal bert all AC, I think that's how you say his name, I don't know. We've got Andre here, 27 years of age, he's only just turned 27 in the 1st, in January. He's worth £16.5 million, like I said, he's Serie A proven, played early days in Roma, played a lot of games at Genoa, but we signed him from AC Milan. He is worth £16.5 million, he's an advanced playmaker, and he's been doing very, very good this season. He's worth £16 million, he, we managed to pick him up for 11 and obviously the rest... We managed to pick up, obviously, Mangala, Moses, Wilfred, Bonnie. My God, D Danny, uh, De Rossi is do doing just, like, exceptionally well. As you can see here in Syria, um, Gonzalo and Dybala are leading, but Ros Rossi, at 31 years of age, has scored um, 16 goals this season, 9 assists when we picked him up for free. That's absolutely insane. So let's get stuck into Juventus here today. We're going to be playing our 4-4-2 now. Unfortunately, Rossi, um, Bert, and Moses are injured, so we're quite weak there on that front. Juventus have Sami Kadira out and Pjanic, which is quite huge. They also don't have Patrice Evra, but most of these players are unregistered by their own choosing. So we're going to have to find a replacement for Moses. We're going to be, we've are going to be got a couple of options here. We could play David Ferroni, or we could play... Kishner, um, the Dutchman who can play on the left, but he actually can play all right on that left-hand side. I think I'm going to play Floroni, though, one point. Yeah, he's more sort of suited to that right-hand side. So let's play him. Hopefully he can rise to the occasion. Or if I was to play him there, would it go down to go to one and a half? Yeah, I do need another right, right winger. We could look into my youth academy. I didn't really think about that. Have we got a good midfielder that's right? 
Um, no, nah, I'm better playing David here. He's a little bit more Serie A proven. Okay, we need another replacement for Rossi. Now, we've got a couple of options here. We've got Wilfred Bonny, who's more of a target man, but he could slow down the play. And, or we have Manuel, who is, can play as a false nine. Bonny scored. He's, he's played, he started 16. He's played 15 out of that. Four goals and one assist. Or should I play Manuel? I think I'm going to play... Wilfred Bonny, and we'll play Manuel a little bit later. But we are facing Juventus at the end of the day. We can play him as an advanced forward, a target man, a poacher, or a complete forward. I'm going to play him as an... Or should, should we have two playing advanced forward? Most likely not. Let's go complete forward then with Wilfred Bonny. So we still need to have another midfielder. We've got, obviously, Danilo here has been playing quite well for me, and we've got Savage. I'm inclined to play Savage because he's more of a box-to-box -box midfielder, um, and he's a bit... Better current ability. Oh, maybe I should play Danilo here instead of him. Play box to box. Yeah, I'm actually going to play Danilo here. He's a lot more competent. We'll play box to box with you. Okay. I think that's pretty much it for my starting 11. So we've got Wilfred Bonny and Mobley leading the line. We've got Keita, who's been playing exceptionally well on the left. We've got Danilo in the midfield. We've got Sampanara here. We've got Ferroni on the right. We've got Dykes playing as my left back. We've got Jones and Mangala and Wisdom. We've got a pretty decent former Premier League um, centre-back line here. But like I said, it was just sort of how it is. Like, I would have loved to sign Victor Wanyama. However, as you can see here, I only can sign two non-European players per season. Mohamed El Neni would have been exceptional as well, but technically he's in Africa, uh, being in Egypt. It's just sort of how it is, I think. Okay, I think I'm quite happy to get stuck into Juventus here today. Hopefully we can pick up the three points. If we can get a lead... Um, we're un yeah, I understand that they're unavailable for this match. I'm quite happy to go with less substitutes. Just to make it easier. Oh, God damn it. I'm going to have to bring up... Because they're, I'm going to have to bring up two guys from the youth system just here. So who's been playing the best? It doesn't, it doesn't really matter at the end of the day. So move you to senior squad. We need to move three up. And then I just need to remember to move them back down. That's just a pain in the ass. I was quite happy to go with less substitutes just to make it easy because it's a pain in the ass just simply moving all this shit. So we're going to have to swap them for these guys. There we go. There we go. And we should be able to continue now. Okay. Right, so those guys I just brought in are already involved with another match. So Okay, so I'm going to have to quickly... Um, oh, that sucks. I might just pause it here because this has been a pain in the ass. All right, sorry about that, guys. That was a pain in the ass just to go through. It was just really time-consuming, which is what we don't really need towards the tail end of this episode. But let's play Juventus here today. Let's see who they're going to be playing up front. Hopefully, we can nick a goal. We could even just get that first goal and sort of sit back a bit if we really wanted to go with that five-at-the-back formation. So, okay, they're playing a three. Right, they're playing a three. It's a, I would say it's a five... One two two or a, or a five three two, okay. Oh, okay, so it's here five one two two two. Okay, so Dabala Higuain leading the line, Marquisio Storado, right? Um, they have I don't even know who that is. Okay, uh, Alexandra Chiellini, Belu uh, ba okay, Bonucci, no Balzagli. They have Musaccio, cool. Buffon and Gold, Danilo, they're playing a very strong sign. They have Victor, Linder, Victor Lindelof. Oh, wow. Okay, they bought him from Benfica. Uh, Torres, who else they got? Barzagli, Curry, Asamoa, Juan Cadrado, Benatia. They've got a very, very a strong side, of course. But let's get stuck into Juve here today. If we can somehow get points from this match, the three would be ideal. If we can get a draw, um, I, I'd... Yeah, I would be happy with the draw, to be honest. This Juventus side compared to mine is absolutely ridiculous. So hopefully we can have a good and fair match here today. Okay, it's snowing in Serie A. Can we... Oh, Wilfred Bonny's nicked back the ball here. 
That's bad. That's really, really bad. Mangala with the interception. Dabala on the attack. Plays it wide to Sandro. And there's a clear cut chance from Juventus. We are 1 0 down just before the 23rd. We lost 2 1 against them earlier in the season. Jones really should have been tracking back on Dabala. They're a lot better. This is tough. This is going to be really tough. And who was that? Sampanara getting his shot off. Now, I am going to be playing the full season with uh, with Lazio, of course. Um, I forgot to mention there was a job opportunity to join Manchester City. I didn't apply for the job. Uh, uh, Pep Guardiola got sacked, which is hilarious. Rafa Benitez is now the manager. I wanted to play the full season because we're playing very, very well in Serie A now. Hopefully, we can go on and win the domestic cup. But if we can make top four, top three this season, that was my main objective. We're currently sitting in second. But we're only losing 1-0 to Juventus, so we're definitely not down and out for the count just yet. Okay, we've got a free kick here. Mangala. We just need to get some better build-up play. Jones, that's, that's a bad ball over the top. Sandro picked it out quite convincingly. Marquisio. Juventus holding up the ball here ex expertly. Chiellini. Marchisio. Mangala with the intercept. Come on, Chieto in the counter attack. Finds. Oh my god. Finds. Was it Wilfred Bonny? Who somehow hit the woodwork there. Chiellini from the throw in. And that's a foul. It's going to be a penalty for Juventus. Gonzalo Higuain is going to step up against Borussia. What a save by the Albanian. Wow. Keeps it to 1-0. And that is a godsend. Gonzalo Higuain does not <laughs> miss many chances from there. Okay. So we're only 1-0 down. I don't think, like I said, we're sort of down and out for the count just yet. We're not playing my strongest side. We don't have Rossi up front. We don't have uh, Bert in our midfield. And we also don't have Moses on the right. So we sort of are lacking a little bit of creativity. But 1-0 down against Juventus at half time. Not bad. Not bad if I do say so myself. So, do I bring off someone now or should I start the second half and sort of wait to the 60th and sort of try and change things up a wee bit? Danilo on the ball. Kieta manages to oh maintain possession. Come on, Kieta. If we can get something from this set play, that'll be excellent. I think I'm going to make my substitute at the 60th to sort of just um, change things up a bit. At this point, we're still 1-0 down. It's going to be hard to beat Buffon, though. Uh, at the 60, I'm gonna I'm gonna do some substitutions because we need fresh legs. We'll do the triple threat a bit earlier because this team hasn't created anything just yet. No, Whew. Barisha keeping it there. It's gonna go out for a corner kick. Let's um let's redo the squad now. So we've got a couple of options. I think I need to bring off Wilfred Bonny. Um, we'll bring on him for Manuel, and we'll get Manuel to play as a false nine there. That's quite nice. Okay, so we've got a couple of options defensively. I think centrally we should bring on Savage in the midfield. Just help get some more legs there. Go back to box to box. And defensively, we've got, um, we've got Radu, uh, 31 years of age. He's been playing very, very, very well this season. He's the, um, captain. Or should we bring off Wisdom? I think because Dykes is on a yellow, I'm going to bring on Radu. I've got a couple of options here, though. No, I'm going to bring on Radu, the captain, the Romanian. Right, and we'll play you as a... I'm half tempted to play as a wingback to sort of go for it, you know? Play as a wingback. Okay, so we're going to be playing Manu uh, up... We're going to be playing Manuel up front. We could call him Manu <laughs> if it's easier. We've got Danilo... Uh, so we've got Manu, Savic, and Radu coming on. Okay, so let's get stuck into them now. Hopefully we don't concede from this corner kick, because that would be uh, detrimental. Sandro whips it into the box for Juventus. And Danilo there, Danilo. Okay, Barisha with a clean cut. Grab. Come on, Lazio. We can bring this one back. We just need to mix things up a little bit. Are we going to get one last chance? It looks like it's going to uh, end there. Damn, they really, really shut up shop when they got that 1-0 victory. I think we could have got away with a better result. But a 1-0 well, defeat against Juventus is nothing to be ashamed about. It's only 1-0. They could have easily had um, a 2-0 there. But we are now 8 points behind Juventus in the title race.
Dan Alexander played really, really well. Damn. Oh, well, so we managed to win 1-0 over Fiorentina. I, I showed you the expanded highlights, the match, the full match. We also managed to lose 2-1 against Roma, and we just lost 1-0 against Juventus. At the moment, the board still thinks I'm quite stable. They just want me to hit European football, which is top three. I thought top four wouldn't be anything to be ashamed about. Uh, they, I mean Champions League, not Europa League. And they want me to reach the final of the Italian Cup. So what I'm going to do now, guys, I'm going to play the rest of the matches off camera. We'll get to the uh, after the last match of the season against Genoa, and then we'll recap uh, to see how we did. Hopefully, we can get a piece of silverware this season. Okay, guys, Season 2 of the Football Manager 2017 Road to Glory has ended. Unfortunately, we didn't win Serie A. We managed to finish in second. Like I said, I wanted to make top four, top three, but we did manage to win the Domestic Cup. Yes, we won the Italian Cup, which is absolutely fantastic. So we'll quickly go through some of the stats, and in the next video, I will be in Season 3 of the Road to Glory, and... Um, I think I want to stay another season with Lazio. I still don't think this is my team just yet. We haven't been given a huge budget. I have brought in a couple of new faces here and there. But it, like I said, it's really going to be hard to topple Juventus who just dominate this league. Okay, so in Serie A, we managed to finish in second. A nearly a whopping 20 points behind Juventus. Inter third, AC Milan fourth, Sampdoria fifth, Roma seventh. Napoli finished in tenth under Roberto Mancini. Uh, Immobile was our top goal scorer. Rossi up there as well with the assists. Uh, Ricardo there, sorry, it was Rossi with the highest rating. Ricardo with the assists. Tactics wise, we're still playing the 4-4-2. Rossi and Immobile leading the line. I think we're going to need to bring in another striker. Rossi being 31 years of age, he still played phenomenally well. 16 goals, 9 assists and we picked him up for free, which is awesome. Kyoto, it's going to be hard to keep him. We do have European football next season, um, but maybe in the season three of the... December of season three, we could accept an offer. We've got um, Andre Berto here, Bert, and then we have Ricardo Sampanara. Two attacking playmakers, that's their best position. I don't like two attacking playmakers. I would sort of prefer, I prefer like a ball winner, maybe even a deep lying or a defensive. Victor Moses on the right played very, very well this season. We've got Mitchell Dykes. Uh, we've got, we've got uh, Jones, Mangala, Wisdom here, and Barisha on the bench. And Wilfred Bonny. We could maybe bring another left back, maybe bring in a defensive midfielder. Um, but yeah, we, we did well after losing our two key centre backs. Competitions wise, as you can see, we did win the Italian Cup 1 0 over Juventus. They didn't play their strongest squad. Gonzalo was the top goal scorer, followed by Dabala back at Mobile fourth in 21. Uh, Mobile second with 12 assists, which is absolutely fantastic. Victor Moses and Kieta up there with the distance travelled. Um, probably would have been higher. Moses, but he did pick up a couple of knocks, a couple of injuries. No one's there for the tackles. No one's really there for the goals conceded. I th oh, Mobley with most key passes. And Mobley with a pretty good hitting contribution. Okay. So, we managed to finish in second with my first season with Lazio. Let's have a look at my managerial profile. Now, I've shot up to a 3.5 rating. So, guys, if you can remember, the main objective for this series is to win a major European domestic title, or maybe even win some cups on the way, because I seem to like my cup runs playing as a manager. Obviously, we did start at Melbourne City in the December in the first season. We moved to Nuremberg. They got promoted. Then we moved to Lazio at the start of pre season two so my my managerial prowess is really shot up we won the Australian domestic cup we got promoted with Nuremberg and we've just won the Italian cup with Lazio now we have European football just quickly want to show you guys how Melbourne City did they're not doing well in the league they finished in seventh this year I finished second with them let's have a look at Nuremberg because I feel really bad I sort of jumped ship at the last minute oh no they finished in 18th that's so disappointing. Oh, 17 points as well. Yikes. So they're being relegated big time. How did Michi Batshuayi, my key signing I got? 24 years of age, 7.5. He's their key player. We picked him up for £5.5 million from Chelsea. 12 goals and 4 assists. Hopefully, Nuremberg can come back up. But I, I reckon they lost a lot of their players, did they? Yeah, they lost Tobias here. They also lost Sally. 
Tobias went to Hertha Berlin. Oh, that sucks. That really does suck. I'll quickly just have a look at the Premier League. I did have a option to apply for Manchester City in the December. However, I wanted to try and stay with Lazio, and it did work out. I did manage to finish in second, get European football, and I, I Champions League <laughs> in saying that. And um, we also managed to win the Italian Domestic Cup, which I'm very, very happy with. A trophy in my first season is absolutely spectacular. Now, Rafa Benitez is the Man City manager. I don't know where Pep is. Um, but it looks like Chelsea won the Premier League, followed by Arsenal, United, Tottenham, Liverpool, Everton getting relegated. We could do that job, but I don't want to go to uh, League One. If there's another job opening here, maybe in December, Season 3, I could move to the Premier League. Um, but yeah, I think that's pretty much it, guys. The board absolutely loved me at the moment. This episode has been dragging on long enough as it is. Let me know in the comments, players you'd like me to sign. Maybe there's someone here. Oh, okay, because it's really hard to sign players that aren't on the transfer list. Chesney might be all right. Mohamed El Neni as well. But yeah, stay tuned for Season 3 of the Football Manager 2016 Road to Glory career. So guys, if you still are enjoying this series and would like to see more, the best thing you guys can do is leave a like and a comment and subscribe if you're new around here. Check out my social media links, Facebook, Twitter and Instagram, all in the description below. If you guys want to get yourself some cheap and reliable games, maybe even Football Manager, check out my G2A affiliation link in the description below. Patreon and Steam group in the description as well as, uh, yeah, there as well. So guys, thanks for watching. My name has been Simsy. Take care. Goodbye. Mares. Whips it into the box. Royce! That is just ridiculous. With the layup, Marco Royce. Holy shit.